living, we're living, we're living in extreme day, 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 day. day. Oh. Let's take now a look at Babylon. We've talked a lot about literal Babylon. Here is a satellite photograph of Babylon. It's 55 miles south, slightly west of south, uh, from Baghdad. And uh, uh, if you look there, you'll see Saddam, there's a, a large synthetic hill that's been built, on top of which is one of Saddam Hussein's elaborate palaces. We're going to get a good look at that in a minute. Then the ruins, just south of it, there are the ruins of the what apparently were, were the original Tower of Babel, the ziggurat that was so famed in Genesis 10, 11, and so on. Let's, I've marked in the upper left-hand corner a section that we'll zero in on and take a better look at. This is that mound. You see the spiral drive going up there. You'll see uh, pictures in a minute of the, with the military trucks and other things there. And... Uh, uh, you, to the right here, you have ancient Babylon. The processional way can be seen in the aerial photograph, the famed entrance to Babylon. And the area of Babylon itself, let's take this section and blow it up. There is the palace of Nebuchadnezzar. It's been rebuilt in part, not completely. The, the room that the handwriting on the wall took place has been rebuilt. Saddam Hussein spent a fortune uh, getting the best archaeologists to confirm the foundations and then rebuilding it. Um, he had affairs of state scheduled there as early as 1987. This is not a recent project. He's been working on this for a long time, spending a fortune doing this. The press makes fun of it. But for someone that has a biblical insight, this is profound because these building materials are being reused. Processional way. And just across for the professional way over to the right is the museum. That's apparently the place where... Uh, Belshazzar sent the guys to go get the temple instruments to use in his party, which of course led to the handwriting on the wall, and you, uh, you remember that all from last time. Let's take a look at some footage that was given to me by the Marines. This is a picture of uh, Saddam Hussein's palace. Bob Cornuke and I were contriving to go there and try. I wanted to get some footage before this gets all secured, and. Uh, uh, the word got around, and it turns out that some of our subscribers are in the Marines taking care of this, so they took this footage for me and then sent it to me with a letter from the Department of Defense saying, this is unclassified, you can use it as you like. So this was just done, this was just done a few months ago. And uh, there's the ships that are, that are being used. There's another shot of this palace that uh, Saddam has built that overlooks the ancient ruins. And then if there are the ruins that uh, are just a little to the uh, east of, of his palace. And you can see that in various states, some of them are, are st some of them are, uh, there's a lot that hasn't been excavated, but there's much that has been. And uh, there's, this is some that hasn't, uh, obviously, uh, ruins that un undone. But uh, we're going to take a, we're going to uh, go down there and take a look at some of this in a minute. There are, these are, this is Babylon. This is what Jeremiah and Isaiah are talking about. And uh, these building materials are being reused. And there are people living there. And uh, the ancient Babylon, uh, we have, uh, they even gave me one of these bricks, by the way. But anyway, the, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's there. It's for real. And I think there's a final shot here of uh, some people getting a tour here. Hang on a second. We'll see it here in a minute. Yeah, there they are. There's some troops going through and a guided tour. Tuesdays and Thursdays, it's open if you make special arrangements. So the Marines, the Marines have it. Now, the Shiites, by the way, are angling to try to take it over. They want to make it their capital in contrast to the Jewish Jerusalem. My friend Tim LaHaye has indicated that he's heard talk of the UN moving there. And that sounds preposterous at first, except it turns out that people in the know indicate the UN is looking for an opportunity to move out of New York because they're crowded, they don't have enough office space, and they'd just as soon get out from under that uh, supervision. 
And uh, the New Yorkers, for their own reasons, would love to ha have them out of there for other reasons. So, so uh, where would they move? Paris, Rome, and London are out of the question because of the constituent interests of the European Union, et cetera. What are they going to do? It sounds preposterous at first, but for them to establish a major power center right in the heart of the energy issue, which is the primary uh, issue over the next couple of decades, not just for us particularly, but for Europe especially. Europe is desperate for oil. For us, it's very important, but we can manage without it if we have to. There's a hundred years supply up in Edmonton, Canada. It's expensive because of the extraction, oil shale, but the extraction techniques are improving. And as oil gets more expensive, which it will, then those uh, marginal techniques start to look more attractive. So the U.S. has problems, but not to the extent Europe has. Europe, for Europe, it's desperate. So it's going to, oil is, is a major thing. But here's what I, the challenge that I usually give audiences when I go travel and, and, and we talk about these things. I usually put this up on a screen and challenge the audience not to believe this. Don't accept what I'm putting on the screen or you flunk the course. I want you to challenge this. Here's my proposition. You and I are being plunged into a period of time about which the Bible says more than it does about any other time, period of time in history, including the time that Jesus walked the shores of Galilee or climbed the mountains of Judea. That's a preposterous statement, that we're moving into a period of time about which the Bible says more than it does about the gospel period. You've got to be kidding. Check it out. Come to your own conclusions. How do you do that? You've got to do two things. You've got to find out what the Bible says. Not what Chuck Missler or whoever your favorite uh, radio uh, personality might be or whoever. No. Find out yourself what the Bible says about these things. The second part of that used to be hard. It's not that hard today, but it does take work. And that is to find out what's going on. You will not find out what's going on on the 10 o'clock news. Trust me. 